Welcome to North Georgia News Now. I'm Adrienne Orell. Coming up today in local news, Dalton Judge Robert Cohen has been elected as president of the Georgia Municipal Court Judges. The city of Dalton has issued a warning regarding a letter asking residents for money. A black bear has recently been spotted in Dalton city limits, and positive results are being seen from the city's spring clean initiative. In state news, a new law has states divided over gun sales, and a Georgia judge has postponed a bill that could restrict charitable bail funds. Later, Shane Franks will be here to share WDNN's community calendar. But first, here's your local weather. Today's local weather is brought to you by Built Well Bank. Welcome back to your local news. Dalton Judge Robert Cohen has been elected as president of the Georgia Municipal Court Judges. The Georgia Council of Municipal Court Judges formed in 1994 and assists judges in the execution of their duties and promotes professional training. All judges serving in municipal and special courts in Georgia are members of the council. According to the Council of Municipal Court Judges website, municipal courts are the busiest courts in Georgia, with more than 380 judges managing more than 1,200,000 cases each year. The municipal court is, not, is the only exposure most citizens have to the judicial system. Cohen said that he is both honored and excited to serve in the leadership of the Council of Municipal Court Judges. I am surrounded by brilliant people in my role. All of these folks want to make the judicial process easier, more transparent, and flexible, meeting the needs of our communities and the people before the court, he said. That is why I'm excited to serve as president. I hope to continue the good work that leadership before me has been able to achieve and build on their successes. Consistency and stability in the judiciary, at any level, gives the public the confidence that their case is being handled fairly, Cohen explained. Judge Cohen was also recognized with the President's Award at the organization's annual summer meeting, which took place earlier this month in Savannah. While I'm honored to receive the President's Award, there are a number of people who helped address those issues which are important to the people that come to municipal courts, Cohen said. The award is a reflection of the Council's concern and focus on helping some of the folks that need it most so they can break the cycle of breaking the law. Judge Cohen and Dalton Municipal Court have taken leadership roles in the state in recent years, first leading the way in the process of using technology to go paperless, and later leveraging technology to bring court back into session during the height of the coronavirus pandemic. Judge Cohen worked with members of the council as he and his staff developed those plans. Judge Cohen will serve this year as president-elect of the council and will serve as president next year. He has previously served as a district representative, secretary, and vice president. The city of Dalton has issued a warning regarding a letter that is going around to residents and asking them for money in exchange for having their names placed on a petition regarding false claims that the police department will be defunded. The letters have been received by registered voters in Dalton. According to officials, they are being mailed out by an organization called the National Police Association, based out of Safford, Texas. The four-page letter says the organization is raising the alarm against abolishing quality of life policing in Dalton. The city of Dalton and the Dalton Police Department both say they are not affiliated in any way with the letters or the organization that is sending them out. The letter asks for recipients to return an attached form to have their name added to the petition, and it suggests that the donations will be used for pro-police media campaigns as well as fundraising expenses and administrative costs of the organization. The city of Dalton says they are not considering any policy of defunding or eliminating the Dalton Police Department. Officials also say they have never received a petition from the National Police Association. Officials want residents to know that it is not necessary to give donations or pay money in order to have one's name added to government petitions. City officials say any resident who wishes to be heard by the Dalton Mayor and Council is welcome to speak during public commentary during City Council meetings. Next up, a black bear was spotted inside Dalton city limits late last week. The bear was initially spotted in the area between Roan Street School and the Mac Gaston Community Center located on Frederick Street. Its last spotted location was in the area of the Martin Luther King Boulevard and Roan Street in Dalton on Thursday afternoon. 
Public safety officers contacted the Georgia Department of Natural Resources for assistance. The department has a policy not to interfere with bears unless they have been inside the city limits for several days. City of Dalton Communications Director Bruce Frazier said the department wants to let the bear find its way back where it came from without interfering or injuring the animal. Many residents took to social media to share their sightings of the bear. Frazier said Dalton's public safety departments were monitoring the bear's location and they urged the public to please not approach it. If anyone sees the bear, please do not get near it. Avoid the animal and stay indoors, urged Frazier. It's also a good idea to make sure that lids are firmly placed on garbage cans and not to leave garbage out in plastic bags that could attract the bear, he said. In 2019, Georgia's Department of Natural Resources Wildlife Resource Division developed a strategic plan to ensure the conservation of Georgia's black bear population, which was only around 500 in the 1970s. Today, the population is estimated to be around 5,000. The city of Dalton says it is seeing positive results from its Spring Clean initiative. Short for Creating Lively Neighborhoods and Environments, the initiative began in April and has led to some successful cases in the project area. Spring Clean has focused on areas surrounding the Mac Gadsden Community Center, including Fields Avenue, Henderson Street, Martin Luther King Jr. Boulevard, and Morris Street. The city put most of its efforts on identifying property-related issues such as maintenance, maintenance and upkeep, but most importantly, safety issues for residents. The Code Enforcement Unit inspected properties and made contact with owners when violations were found. Additionally, code inspectors also offered to connect property owners with resources to help resolve problems, such as Believe Greater Dalton, Habitat for Humanity, Rebuilding Hope, and others. Dalton's Public Works, Works Department also participated, offering trash amnesty days to pick up accumulated trash and debris located on properties which normally cannot be collected at the curb. The focus area covered 140 residential, commercial, and industrial property parcels. The code enforcement unit identified 98 cases in the area. Some issues were minor violations, such as having high grass. Other violations were more complex, like a property located on Straight Street. The property owner replaced worn siding, window trim, and the roof after being contacted by city officials. Dan Llewellyn, an inspector from the code enforcement unit, was pleased with the outcome of the property on Straight Street. As far as the outcome, it exceeded my expectations as far as what work was done, and really exceeded my expectations as how far as we were willing to go to clean up the property, he stated. The city of Dalton plans to focus on other areas of the city that need improvements as well. When we return, I'll share some state news. Welcome back. Should gun store sales get special credit card tracking? States across the U.S. are divided over whether to prohibit or mandate the tracking of gun sales. The controversial law will go into effect in California this week and, re and will require credit card networks like Visa and MasterCard to provide banks with special retail codes that can be assigned to gun stores in order to track their sales. Some Democratic lawmakers and gun control activists hope the new retail tracking code will help financial institutions flag suspicious gun-related purchases, potentially adverting mass shootings and other crimes. Lawmakers in states like Colorado and New York are choosing to follow California's lead. The merchant category code is the first step in the banking system, saying, Enough. We're putting our foot down, said Hudson Munoz, director, executive director of Guns Down America, a nonprofit advocacy group. You cannot use our system to facilitate gun crimes, Munoz said. He helped lead the effort to establish the firearm store code, noting that credit cards are used to buy weapons and ammunition for some of the nation's deadliest mass shootings. According to Munoz, the intent of a gun merchant code is to spot suspicious patterns, such as a person with little history of gun purchases who suddenly spends large amounts at multiple gun stores within a short period of time. Once alerted by banks, authorities can then investigate. L the law is controversial, as other states such as Georgia, Iowa, Tennessee, and Wyoming are passing opposite laws, which ban the use of specific gun shop codes. Many Republican lawmakers and gun rights activists fear the retail code could lead to suspicion of gun buyers who have done nothing wrong. The new laws highlight the wide national divide on gun policies. Just this past week, U.S. Surgeon General Vivek Murthy declared gun violence a public health crisis, citing a rising number of firearm-related deaths, a move that was criticized by the National Rifle Association. 
In other state news, a federal judge has temporarily blocked part of a Georgia law that restricts organizations from helping people pay bail so they can be released from jail while their criminal cases are pending. U.S. Judge Victoria Marie Calvert opted to stall part of Senate Bill 63 for 14 days to allow lawmakers to present arguments on whether or not it should be stayed until a lawsuit over the measure is resolved. Under Senate Bill 63, mandatory cash bail is expanded to include 30 new offenses, including many nonviolent misdemeanors that do not involve physical harm to others, such as failure to appear, forgery, criminal trespass, and others. Further, the bill bans bail funds by not allowing organizations, charities, individuals, or groups to bail out more than three people per year unless they meet the requirements for bail bond companies. That means passing background checks, paying fees, holding a business license, securing the local sheriff's approval, and establishing an escrow account or other form of collateral. The American Civil Liberties Union of Georgia and the Institute for Constitutional Advocacy and Protection at Georgetown University Law Center filed a lawsuit pertaining to the bill on June 21st. They represent Bard Business Foundation, an Atlanta-based nonprofit membership-based organization founded to empower marginalized, formerly incarcerated people. The group's lawsuit argues that restrictions on bail funds are unconstitutional and asks the judge to prevent its enforcement. The lawsuit states that the law imposes what are arguably the most severe restrictions on charitable bail funds in the nation. It also argues that if the statute is allowed to take effect, that the restrictions will eliminate charitable bail funds altogether. Earlier this month, The Bail Project, a national nonprofit that helps low-income people post bonds, announced it has closed its Atlanta branch due to Senate Bill 63. The group says they are encouraged by Judge Cowlett's ruling. When we come back, Shane Franks will share WDNN's community calendar. But first, here are the obituaries. Welcome back. It's time for WDNN's Community Calendar. Here are some things that are going, wrong, uh, going around in your area. Christy Temples of Finding Grace in the Wilderness Ministry and of WDNN's uh, television will join the Reigns family for three nights of prayer and praise on July 11th, 18th, and 25th from 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. The event is located at the BBNT City Park in Calhoun on 308 North Wall Street. This event is free and open to everyone, so be sure to stop by for this event. For more information, email Finding Grace in the Wilderness 777 at gmail.com today. Join the fourth annual Catoosa County Run White and Blue 5K road race and one mile uh, fun run. And this year's race promises to be bigger and better than ever before. Located at 264 Catoosa Circle, start and finish right next to the uh, Catoosa County College and Career Academy on uh, the Benson Place campus and enjoy a rolling course of streets and neighborhoods. The One Mile Fun Run is a perfect opportunity for families and beginners to join in on the fun. 
As you run or walk, you'll be surrounded by a supportive community cheering you on every step of the way as you help support local businesses in Catoosa County. Registra registration is required and walk-ins uh, will not be accepted. To register or to learn more information, call 706-965-5201 today. Join Get Moving Walk every other Tuesday for a group walkthrough the Force of Audubon Acres. Take a delightful bi-weekly stroll through the serene pathways. This is a leisurely walk designed for all ages and fitness levels. This isn't about speed or distance, it's about enjoying the fresh air, engaging in light conversation, and embracing the beauty of our surroundings. Whether you're an avid walker or simply seeking uh, a relaxing outing, this is the perfect opportunity to connect with neighbors and nature. Remember, comfortable shoes and a spirit of camaraderie are all you need to join in for the fun. The date is every other Tuesday beginning at 4.30 p.m. The location is at Audubon Acres. Visitor center attire is comfortable clothing, uh, footwear, and come join and take gentle strides, unwind, and foster a sense of community with every step. This event is free with no admission. No need to register beforehand. This will take place rain or shine, barring significant weather. If you have any questions, please call 423-892-1499 for more information. If you'd like to submit information on your event for North Georgia News Now's community calendar, send an email to info at WDNNTV.com. And that's it for this edition of North Georgia News Now. Be sure to visit us on Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram. And as always, thank you for watching.